Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm Xin Feng Bai from the editorial board of Synthesis Workshop. Today we are joined by Kevin Fingler on the topic of halogen binding catalysis. Kevin obtained his master's degree from the University of Minster and now is in the third year of his PhD under the supervision of Professor Garcia Manquino. We recently published work on Angawand disclosed a journey of fine-tuning of the halogen-halogen interactions between substrate and catalyst, which lead to a breakthrough in the initial selectivity. Let's turn it over to Kevin. Thank you for the kind introduction. Before I will come to the enhanced selective halogen bonding, I want to explain to you what anion binding catalysis is. In this catalytic approach, we have an ionic substrate where the anion can be captured by the catalyst to form a close contact ion pair. Due to this contact ion pair, it is easier for the nucleophile to attack and the reaction results in a chiral product. The first non-selective anion binding reaction was done by Jacobs in 2004 with his chiral tyourea catalyst. In this acyl picted Spengler reaction, he could reach an enantiomeric excess up to 93% EE. Besides tyourea, urea and squaramide moieties, also triazole units like in our group are often used for anion binding activation. 2014, our group reported this multidentate hydrogen bond donor with a chiral backbone and four triazole units embedded. This catalyst has a fast conversion between the helical and the linear conformation when no chloride anion is in presence, but if a chloride or an anion is present, the catalyst prefers to form the helical structure. We applied this concept in the dearomatization of quinolines. In this riser type reaction, the drug chloride is pre activating the quinoline by forming the quinolinium, and the released chloride anion is captured by the catalyst, creating the close contact ion pair. After attack of the nucleophile, a yield and an anthomeric excess of up to 96% could be achieved. Here I talk all the time about hydrogen bonding, but now I would like to move on to the term halogen bonding or the nature of a halogen bond. When a hydrogen atom is bounded to an electron withdrawing group, the surface is positively polarized and so it is able to bind anions. If we take a look to the classical way of a halogen bounded to a rest group, we expect that the surface is negatively polarized and with this the halogen is not able to bind anions. But is the halogen bound to an electron withdrawing group, an elongation of the sigma bond, a positive area is created, the so-called sigma hole or Lewis acid site. And the three unshared lone pairs form a negative belt around the atom, the Lewis base site. By comparing the halogens each other, we can see that the atoms getting of course bigger and also that the sigma hole is getting larger for the heavier atoms, marked as the blue part. Other effects must also be taken into account to explain the halogen bond. What is very important and significant for the halogen bond is the interaction angle of around 180 degree with the Lewis base or the anion. If the Lewis base or the anion leaves this 180 degree, there is a repulsion with the negative belt of the halogen and an interaction is not possible anymore. And this makes the catalyst design a challenge. For our design, we adapted the concept of our hydrogen bond donor and synthesized a similar multidentate halogen bond donor. Further, we employed different rest groups, modified the chiral backbone and varied the iodine incorporation. Our goal was to find enantiomeric selective applications based on halogen bonding catalysis because there are barely any reported yet. The first enantiomeric selective application was reported by the group of Huber in 2020. In this Mukayama Aldo reaction with this bis imidazolium based halogen bond donor, they were able to reach up to 33% EE. The second example was done by our group in 2021. In the riser type dearomatization, we were able to reach up to 30% EE. In the activation mode picture, which is based on DFT calculations, you can see that only one catalyst arm is participating in the transition state and the second arm is turned away from the chloride. So, the question arose, 
how to incorporate the second catalyst arm for more efficient chirality transfer. And with this, I am coming to our fine tuning hypothesis. Namely, to introduce a Lewis base to the core of the substrate in form of a halogen atom. Because the formed kinolinium is acting as an electron withdrawing group, the halogen can also build up a sigma hole and a Lewis base site with which it could possibly interact with the second arm of the catalyst. We started our investigations by letting rotate a chlorine atom around the kinolin core. With the chlorine in the 4 position, we were able to achieve increased enantiomer selectivity. Compared with the heavier halogens, we could see slightly better enantiomeric ratios, but unfortunately the yield dropped a lot. This was due to a competitive halogen exchange with a released chloride anion. By changing the solvent to diacyl ether, we could minimize this problem, and also the enantiomeric ratio was increased a bit further. In furthermore solvent screening studies, we found out that diacyl ether hexafluorobenzene in a ratio of 2 to 1 was working the best for our system with an enantiomeric ratio of 83 to 17. To gain a better insight what is happening in this reaction, computational studies were done. Here on the left side you can see a calculated map of the transition state. But to see better the key interactions, we are looking to the right side. We can see four sigma hole interactions, three are coming from the catalyst to the chloride and one is coming from the substrate to the chloride. Additionally, we have iodine-iodine interactions between the iodine of the substrate and two triazole iodines from the catalyst, which we can see as weak van der Waals forces. The iodine-iodine interactions are important for the fixation of the substrate in the catalytic pocket and additionally stabilize the whole complex. So further we screen different halogen bond catalysts with different chiral backbones. We have introduced a 1,3 distance, a 1,2 diphenyl ethane and a benaphthyl based chiral backbone. But none of these catalysts could increase the nantomeric ratio compared to the 1,2 backbone. So based on this we changed the iodine incorporation. The catalyst with the upper iodines could increase slightly the enantiomeric ratio. For the catalyst with the lower iodines, the other enantiomer was favored. Compared to the related hydrogen bond donor, which favors the same enantiomer, we can say that probably the catalyst with the lower iodines can undergo the same helical complex as the hydrogen bond donor, while the catalyst with the upper iodines is probably not able to do this. Based on a tetraiodal catalyst, we screened also different rest groups and could increase the nonsumeric ratio up to 85 to 15 with the acetylene tertiary butyl group. And since we are focused on pure halogen bonding, we selected this catalyst as the catalyst of choice. Our next step was to screen different TBS protected acetylene acetates and a TBS protected dianolate. The linear acyl groups Add the oxygen led to higher enantiomeric ratios, except the acyl chain. Since the methoxynucleophile was more reactive and in addition commercially available, we decided to screen different 4 yodokinolines with this nucleophile. We were able to introduce a second halogen atom, an electron withdrawing group, some electron neutral and donating groups, boron species, and another class of N heterorenes, the pyridines. All products gave an enantiomeric ratio and the same high level as the model substrate. To confirm the computational studies, we introduced a tellurium phenyl group at the 4 position of the kinoli core because charcogens can also bear sigma holes. We also tested a methoxy and methyl group in the 4 position. The quinoline with the tellurium in the 4 position could provide an enantiomeric ratio in the same range as the model substrate with the iodine in this position, while the other two groups provided significantly lower results in terms of enantiomeric ratio. This shows us that a sigma hole donor in the 4 position is important for our system to transfer the chirality more efficient. We extended the scope to the isokinolines. First we looked again for the optimal position of the halogen at the core. 
For the isokinolines, the 5 position is more suitable to obtain high enanthine selectivities. The comparison between the halogens show no significant trend, but with a metoxic group in the 5 position, the enanthine selectivity dropped again. Based on the 5 bromo isokinoline, we created a small scope and could increase the enanthomeric ratio up to 95 to 5. To summarize, I would like to mention the most important points again. In this project, we performed a fine-tuned and unsuselective de-aromatization via halogen bonding. We have here a tridentate binding of the catalyst to the chloride anion, additional sigma hole binding from the substrate to the chloride, iodine-iodine interactions for fixation and stabilization of the whole complex. With this, we were able to reach up to 76% EE in the quinoline dearomatization and up to 90% EE in the isoquinoline dearomatization, which is almost threefold higher than the previous reported enanthus selectivities via purely halogen bonding catalysis. Here I come to the end now. I would like to thank the whole group and everybody who was working with me in this project especially Alisa Koipa, with whom I was working on this project together. Also, thanks to the team of Synthesis Workshop for the opportunity to present my research in this way. Goodbye. Thanks, Kevin, for sharing your story. As we can see from this interesting example, how the chiral induction was improved via the fine-tuning of hydrogen-hydrogen interaction by changing the position of hydrogen and the substrates lighting angle of the chiral backbone, and the electronic substitutions and the catalysts. Don't forget to leave your question or comments and subscribe us. See you next time.